Talk about the pick, uh, the market reaction, and the timing. Senator Bob Corker, a member of the Senate Banking Committee. Uh, Senator, your your um, your opposition um, to, to uh, Ms. Yellen, I, I think, if I could phrase this, because she's maybe she's too too dovish, and maybe some of this stuff comes home uh, to roost someday. I, the one thing that these market guys that have been bearish since like 800, they, they say I, I, I'm just early on being bearish. Has her dovishness, has there been any evidence that she was incorrect or, or that something bad has happened from being too dovish up to this point? Because we certainly haven't seen any, uh, any inflation or any reason uh, to say that you were right about uh, her being too dovish at this point. Yeah, look, I, uh, I felt like she was not particularly modest about uh, the role of monetary policy in the economy. And I don't see any evidence that that's changed. But look, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I'm going to look at her record. It, there's really not much there to discern. She hasn't given a lot of talks and there aren't a lot of notes. But uh, look, at the end of the day, let's face it, the trade is halfway on. Uh, it's hard to say what the effects are going to be. And so, you know, this is going to be a real Humphrey Hawkins meeting, if you will. One of our staffers mentioned with a vote. And so, you know, I want to understand. Uh, you know, how she expects to get out of the trade, uh, why there wasn't tapering that took place, when will it take place, uh, any evidence that quantitative easing, easing is actually working relative to employment, yeah. and, uh, and, and I want to make sure that she doesn't view herself as an enabler of, uh, of bad policy within the Congress itself. So look, this ought to be an interesting hearing. I sure. look forward to learning what her views are, but uh, again, I've seen nothing to change my view of where she is relative to monetary policy in the last uh, two or three years. You know, I, that's the thing about these uh, confirmations. There's nothing wrong with, with um, you know, and she loves transparency. That's, so there's nothing wrong with you posing these types of questions and, no. and uh, getting her to respond. But at this point, there will be a lot of people, Senator, that, that would say just definitively that the the lion's share of the evidence is that it was the right move to be dovish when she was dovish. So it's going to be, you know, you're kind of coming at it from a, a position where people are going to say, well, that's, you know, for, for an intellectual argument, it's fine to do that. But she was right. Yeah. Well, look, uh, again, at the end of the day, it's kind of like uh, halftime in the national championship and we're handing off to a new player. And and I think uh, this yeah, is going to be a you, good you know opportunity Alabama's, for us. You know, Alabama's going to win. <laughs> Well, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the fact to, is, you know, this is an interesting time for that handoff. And, you know, I know the chairman, uh, the current chairman has talked about his outstanding record relative to inflation. And as you know, I have a lot of respect for him. But I think the challenge is moving away from this in a way that is satisfactory. Yeah. And she's going to have a lot of pressure. You know, the IMF came out uh, yesterday with a report. Uh, putting a lot of pressure on the Fed to keep easy money in, in place. So, again, I do really look forward to these hearings. Uh, she wasn't someone I could support back in 2010. I, thought, I doubt that's going to change. But, look, uh, the fact is the president looks like he's consolidated his base. Uh, I don't know how tough her nomination will actually be. There are a lot of issues for us to focus on right now, and I'm glad that uh, this is coming up. Hey, Senator, so. who, who would you have supported? It would there are any of the other names that were mentioned were you more in favor of them yeah so you know we've always made it a habit of not uh, commenting on people who uh, were not nominated if you will and you look let's face it uh, in in the lineup of folks that the current president uh, would uh, you know consider nominating there probably weren't folks who would be more along my line of thinking look I'm more of a, a, a eat your vegetables kind of guy I think we've got a lot of things here in Washington that we need to address uh, you know I'm not uh, the chocolate pie kind of guy and that's where we've been at the Fed for a long long time and no doubt some of that is uh, because of the irresponsibility we've we've had here in Congress I am beginning, by the way, to be a little hopeful uh, regarding our current situation. It looks like the House is, you know, beginning to focus on the right things. And, and look, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little energized that we might actually begin to talk about some fiscal reforms to help put our country uh, on a more solid course. So uh, within Congress here, I'm beginning to feel a little bit more optimistic. You, you think there will be a settlement reached before the 17th or on the 17th? I don't know. I, I do think, as I mentioned before, Becky, I, I don't really see the end yet, although beginning uh, to be, as I mentioned, more optimistic. Uh, 
I don't know if we'll be done by the 17th. I think, uh, you know, that's a date that's been established. I think everyone knows the Treasurer usually gives themselves a, a little room in the event these things get messy. But, you know, I look at Paul Ryan's op-ed this morning in the Wall Street Journal, the beginning to talk about the right kinds of things here at Cantor's uh, today in, in the Washington Post. I think that we're beginning to now move in the right direction, and I hope this will be about the fiscal reforms necessary to put our country back on track. And Senator, candidly, if we were to do that, it would ease some pressure on the Fed. Senator, so. you, you just said that, that the Treasury gives itself a little bit of room. Uh, are yeah. you suggesting uh, that Jack Lew is lying about the 17th being the deadline and a hard deadline? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, look, in, in some cases, uh, you know, in the past, the Treasury has given itself, you know, 60 days leeway. So in this case, I don't think he's actually given himself that much time. There is a date on November 1st where a lot is happening. So look, I, I think any Treasury official would be uh, committing malpractice if they didn't give themselves a, a few days, knowing how Congress and the administration, you know, doesn't particularly work well together. So uh, no, not at all. I mean, I think he's probably established a the psychological date, if you will, of the 17th. I think that's where but Congress dis is But disingenuous that, that, that the world falls apart on the 18th and, and that actually payments do not go out? Uh, we don't have evidence of that being the case. Again, let, let me say this to you. Look, I don't, uh, I think debt ceiling, uh, debt, debt ceilings are important dates and I don't want to minimize the importance of us acting in an appropriate way. I think uh, around the 13th of this month, sometime, uh, you know, things are going to get very volatile if we're not moving closer to a deal. Okay. But, the, but look, you know, a Treasury Secretary would, again, be committing right. malpractice if they right. established uh, midnight all, on the 17th. I think we all know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, we, okay. I mean, we appreciate okay. it. Well, one okay. last thing real quick. Do you believe that Yellen does get passed? So I shouldn't say this, uh, but uh, in all likelihood, uh, she will. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, most Democratic senators are going to support her. Uh, they're likely. I, I don't know where our side of the aisle is. I certainly haven't wept. Uh, but I will say this to you and your listening audience, which cares greatly right now about monetary policy. This will probably be the most enlightening hearing in modern history because, again, we're halfway through the trade. And I think this is going to be very, very important to our country and to the world. And I look forward. Hopefully, she'll be transparent in her answers. Uh, I think this is going to be an important process. Yeah. All right. Uh, I was trying to figure out when the last time the volunteers were in the national title. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go way back. Uh, you did. Yeah. You know, well, they're good, coming back. That was a good yeah. game against Georgia. They, uh, right. You did yourself proud there. Did you win in '98? Did you win the national title? I think that was the last year. Uh, I think yes. you did. Yeah, that's, 13. That's yeah, that's yeah, a great that's right. season. That's All right. right. I like your new coach. I think he came from Cincinnati, right? Yeah, he's a good man. The yes, guy sir. that left it. The right so thing. Hey, there, again, he's another one of those eat your vegetables kind of guys. Guys, you know, he's building from the foundation up, and Got it. let's face it, that's where we need to be here in Washington. And, and again, uh, look how you I, do that. That was smooth, man. You've been, you're, uh, you're, you're picking this up really quickly. We got well, I've, I've learned. I'm learning from the pros. You know, there's none better than, than uh, watching you each morning. So. Oh, we love oh, being yeah. with Bob Corker in the morning. Yeah, we do. Thank you, Senator. All right, thank All you. All right, we'll see you later.